If you're like me, you've been hearing about the last days for your entire life. I know for me, I'm 50 and I've been hearing about it my whole life. But for us who've been in church and study the Bible our whole lives, it's a really wonderful time to be alive because we're seeing so much prophecy be fulfilled, things that I would read about and didn't understand how it was going to work. I'm seeing it happen before my very eyes and it gives us strength and courage. This is why we don't have to be afraid because by the prophecy being fulfilled, we know that God is in control and that he's going to take care of us. When we speak of prophesying, we want to be found speaking the word of the Lord and saying what we know to be truth, to stand on the prophecies of the Bible and to listen to what God is telling us. There's really no room. There never has been. But at this point, there's really no room for us to be teaching any kind of unfounded doctrine because we are really in the last days and we should be seeking Christ and prophesying about God and the word of God and Jesus like never before. And when we start in our lesson, we're looking at Anna and Anna who lived in the temple and she had been widowed and she was there and she was faithful and Anna was there when they brought Jesus into the temple and God had allowed her to live to see the salvation, to see the culmination of centuries of prophecy of the Messiah and she was able to live and see that and share that and tell that that's what she was talking about and I looked at the book when I was looking through the international lesson commentary the name of this unit is about the call of women and women being called and it's really you know again these lessons are written in advance and for this unit to come right at the time where the United States has just sworn in our first uh, female vice president. And there are women doing so many different things at this time for this lesson to come. And, and women have always played a very important role in ministry. At no point would I ever try to compete with men. I believe that when women and men work together and complement each other, then we can effectively lead in ministry. We're talking about this and we see Anna here. And then we went over to the prophecy of on the day of Pentecost. When we get over into Acts in the second chapter, it talks about the day of Pentecost, which is when the Holy Ghost fell and they were there and they were speaking in tongues. They were speaking in other tongues, which is so, so significant. I'm not going to go too deep into this because that's another lesson, but it's so significant because they were speaking in other tongues and at Pentecost, there were people there from all over the world. So they were able to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ in their own language. And they were able to take this gospel and spread it abroad. Because remember, at that time, we didn't have TVs or or the Internet or radios. Everything was delivered by foot. So they happened to be there, not just happened by God's design. It was while they were there that the Holy Ghost came and they began to speak in these tongues. And people were astonished that they could could hear this because it, they, these are not educated men. Typically, highly educated people could speak in more than one language. I know I speak English and I can speak a little bit of Spanish and French, but I could definitely not preach in another tongue unless God so anointed me to do so. So. They were able to hear this and there was so much noise, right? And they began to wonder, well, what is going on? What are they doing? Are they drunk? That was the perception that these people were drunk. And that's when Peter spoke up and he said, oh no, they're not drunk. Look what time it is. It's not even any place open yet for them to get anything to drink. They're not drunk, but this is that, that was spoken of by the prophet Joel. He, he went back and he referenced prophecy. And I love that because anytime we're speaking or we're delivering the word of God. Go right to the word. My mom just teach me. She said, look, it is 66 books in the Bible. It ain't no reason for you to go making up stuff, making up stories and nursery rhymes. Go to the word, deliver the word. And it's enough in that word 
to save you. So we see that Peter, he went straight to the word of God, back into the world spoken of by the prophet Joel. He said, and in that day, I want to read that scripture because that is such a powerful scripture when he talks about Joel. And he said, but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. And I love the inclusive, the inclusiveness of this verse, because it's not limited to anyone, your sons and your daughters, the old and the young. And this is something that I teach all the time when we're teaching about ministry, because sometimes I don't know what it is. We try to make ministry, the gospel, the word of God, salvation so exclusive. You know, I'm saved and you're not. So I'm here and you're there. But this is an ex inclusive gospel. It's for everyone, your sons and your daughters. And, you know, sometimes people still, even in 2021, have hangups, right? About people preaching and people teaching and people ministering and all of these things. But that is not what was prophesied back here. And it says that in the last day, and this is what... They showed them these people who were prophesying and sharing the word of God in all of these languages. They were not ordained. They were not licensed. They weren't preachers. They weren't rabbis. They were just people who were filled with the Holy Ghost. Isn't that amazing? The only requirement for you to be able to prophesy about the word of God is that you are filled with the Holy Ghost. And God gives the Holy Ghost freely. See what the Holy Ghost is? It is the power of Jesus Christ that lives in you to keep you. It is your keeping power. It is the power to make you live right daily. It is the power to keep you saved. It is the power to make you say what you want to say. The Holy Ghost brings all things to your remembrance. When you find yourself in situations where you need to speak, God will give you the words to say. I know even for me, I, I grew up and I figured I was that person who just wanted to be saved, right? Do my thing, mind my own business. I'm not going to bother nobody. I'm just going to be saved. But I kept finding myself in situations where I had to speak up. Something inside of me, the word that was down in me, would just come out of my mouth. And even though I'm teaching Sunday school now in everyday conversation, no, I'm not preaching. But these concepts, these precepts, these lessons, they just flow out in my normal conversation because this word of God is what I live by. So it's down in me. You know, they say whatever is in you, that's what's going to come out of you. So when we speak of called to prophesy, Call to prophesy is not restricted to the pulpit. You can prophesy in your everyday life. There will be situations that you will be asked to address. There will be people who will come to you with a need. And that is your opportunity to prophesy. And it talks about all of these things. And I love this part right here. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved whoever whoever you are whatever you've done and i've said this before it does not matter what you did last week yesterday this morning it doesn't even matter what you may have done or said before you clicked play on this video all you have to do is call on the name of the lord out of a sincere heart and he will save you see we are called to prophesy prophesying is not me talking about myself and what I do in the Sanctuary Academy. Yes, I have a business. Yes, I have classes. Yes, I'm called to teach. But it is mostly about me talking about the Lord because in everything that I do and in everything that I say, God is at the center of it. And so my conversation should be on a level where anytime you have a conversation to me, it should prompt you towards salvation. That's a huge challenge for us. But it says we are called to prophesy. We have that comp that accountability because what sheep beget sheep. When you talk about that, we say that a lot. But just think about that. You have a shepherd and you have sheep, but a shepherd can't produce sheep. A shepherd takes care of a sheep. They lead the sheep. They feed the sheep. They discipline the sheep. 
but a shepherd can't give birth to a sheep. The only way you get more sheep is that the sheep beget sheep. So we have this accountability to prophesy the word of God. When these people were filled with the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost, they went out in the streets and they were telling that they were speaking this word. And again, they were just flowing in the spirit. It says what they spoke as the spirit gave them utterance. See, when I talk to you, and that's why I always say I fast and I pray and I study all the time because when I open my mouth and when I hit record on this camera, I want to speak as the spirit gives utterance because what thou says doesn't matter. What I think doesn't matter. What I feel and what I say can't save you. It is only through the power of Jesus Christ and the Holy Ghost that can save you. So I need to speak as the spirit gives me utterance. And if we think about that before we open our mouths, think of how much more impactful we will be. When you hear the word of God, it's going to touch your heart. It's going to change your life. It's going to lift your spirit. It's going to just feed your soul. That is what we need to be doing, especially as we talk about these last days. And again, with Anna, you know, the widow, how God blessed her to live, to see the salvation of Jesus and how she prophesied and she told everybody, yeah, that's him. God bless me. That's it. See, you want to be able to say, yeah, Jesus, that's it. This is what Jesus did for me. This is what Jesus did for you. And that is how we are called to, proph to prophesy. And we want to answer this call, call. Like I said, this was something that I struggled with. Would you believe it? With me having the Sanctuary Academy, I just felt like I'm not going to tell it. You know, like Jeremiah, I'm going to, I can't, I'm going to keep it to myself. I ain't going to say that. I'm just going to do what I got to do to get to heaven and be quiet. But it was like fire shut up in my bones and it's to a point where I look forward to sharing this lesson with you this is the best part of my week sharing the word of God with you and I challenge you to answer the call to prophesy